So yesterday, a lot of you would have seen that I'm just starting a series now where I'm going to release to you every single medium build that I actually use in this game. So this is my best snow builds. You've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. And yesterday was my sandbook. So if you're looking for sandbook builds, then go ahead and go to yesterday's video and you can see my best sandbook builds. There is two sandbook builds that I use, but in today's video for the snow, there's actually three variants that I'm going to be using. I've got a PvP one. It's not amazing, remember the snow, but if you did want to use it for PvP, then I've got the PvP build, I've got the PvE build, and then I've got the tank build for the snow and if you guys are wondering how the hell do i get these builds where do i optimize them well there's actually two places the place i optimize them as you can see on the screen right now is actually done on skull and bones tools and over here you can go over to the loadout designer now if i went over to the ship the desired ship at the top left i will go over to the snow I will then go ahead and see what top deck, what bottom deck, as you can see here hovering over, you can see the top deck and bottom deck. Uh, and then I will go ahead and place on my weapons. When you place one on, you can see the green arrow and the red arrow to know where the, the bonuses and the negatives are on each weapon. And I'll go ahead and do that as well with the furniture. Um, and I'll chuck on any kind of furniture as well with the attachments. And then, then you've got your armors. And then with this, once you've placed loads of random weapons on your ship, um, obviously, it's not have to be, don't have to be random. It could be quite calculated because you can see the the bonuses and the pros. You can open up the loadout stats of snow here, and you can actually get the full detailed stats in terms of DPS and everything that you could imagine from this. You got the overall damage per second. You can try and min max your whole build. Uh, you can even download it as you can see here. Let's go ahead and do so. But if, as well, with a build, if you want to share your specific build and the way it looks, you can click on this tab just up here on the top right. Click on the cosmetics. Go ahead and equip, equip your cosmetics on your ship. And then with that, when you share it as well, they'll get the, the loadout for one. And they'll also understand what cosmetics you've got on your build. Now, uh, another side note, a lot of people do ask, how the hell do I get my costume? Well, if you go over here, the costumes and the outfits are currently still being added. But if you want to, for instance, look at any kind of ship cosmetic, you can go in here and you can see all of the different types of ship cosmetics. And you can click on one and it will tell you exactly how to get it. So, for instance, if we click on the vicious, vicious, vicious Jackal set, it was purchasable in the Ubisoft store. Um, but, for instance, my outfit, that's just so you can see that it's getting added, stuff like that, um, you can go to the Libertine set. One set, it has to be on Cosmetic. And then you click on the Libertine set and you can see this is the sets. The outfits are coming. They're not there, all there yet. Um, and you can see that obviously it's got obtainable locations. It was purchasable in the Ubisoft store. It was purchasable in the first week of the game. It was not limited, so it should come back when I don't know. And now at the top, last time I showed this, I saw the in-game appearance. And I thought, why can you only see the front and the back like that? But you can actually slide it from left to right, guys. So if you want to see how the outfit fully looks, then make sure you use this slider. This does work as well for some of the ships. I don't think it's done for all of them yet, but it will be. So, for instance, if we go to Ship Cosmetics and we go to All Sets, um, I know that, for instance, the one that's got the little ghost mast, uh, which is one of the new additions to the game. I'm not too sure exactly which one it was. Um, let me have a quick little look, and then I will get back to you. Here we go. The Servant of Hades set. So you can see here that it's, it, it's got this bits on it, but you can go the in-game appearance, and you can actually see what it looks like now not only that you can actually click on for instance in-game appearance on this and you can see it as well to see what it actually looks like in game if you're wondering whether you should buy it or not um it's all in here so it's really cool if you guys are looking to buy something in the store but you're not too sure what it looks like you just click on the in-game appearance and you can see the day and night and see if it's really worth your coin um, because obviously the gold in the game is not the cheapest, but at least this way you can see it. So that's enough of me talking about Skull and Bones loadouts. Let's actually get back to the game and show you my loadout. So here we are back in the game. We're going to start off with the PvP build. If I go ahead and go over to Manage Ship, we can look at the weapons. So the front and the rear, we are using the Skurlocks long nines and the reason is because obviously as you all know that one perk the mast breaker it deals 7,000 damage after the torn sail effect is applied it's got piercing free so adds 30 percent of damage as piercing damage increased damage to weak points by 100 percent and it's got tearing too increases damage by 50 percent when hitting sails um, and obviously it's got the extra bonus piercing damage and it's got a very high standalone damage especially if you hit a weak point with it and then on the sides we're actually using the Karens. Now, the reason we're using the Karens on this build for PvP 
is because of the Riptide. So adds 50% of damage as severe damage when the target is flooded. Adds 10% of damage as flooding damage as well. Now, the reason we want to use the Carronades is because, as you can imagine, the snow doesn't have many cannon ports, so it can't really do too much damage. So what is your way of winning a PvP fight in the snow? Well, the way you win a PvP fight in the snow is by outlasting them because you've got so much more brace if you don't know about the ship the snow and its perk if we go over here you can see it's a tank it's got tenacity it recovers brace strength by four percent per second while bracing increases brace strength by 50 percent and brace strength recovery by 150 percent so in effect this ship can brace for a very long time not only that comparing it to other ships so if we look here for instance at the the, the sandbook um we can see the sandbook's only got seven thousand brace strength and we can see here that it's got 26,000 brace strength. So in, in effect, with the snow, you want to be bracing as much as possible. And you just basically want to be out surviving them and just constantly ticking away their health with the flood. Um, because it's, as long as you are flooding them, you're going to be constantly chipping them away. And they're going to have to leave the fight before you because you can literally just out brace, out heal and just stay in the fight. Providing you've got enough repair kits for a lot longer than them and they will have to leave because of the flooding. Now we obviously counteract that because we're using the Ouroboros, but we're using the Karens as well. And the Karens do hit quite hard. Um, as the last weapon that we've got is the Auxiliary, which is the Leopold 3. The reason we want the Leopold 3 because it's got the flooding on it. And if you can land it once you've torn their sails, you can get that flooding activated. So you can use them Karens and go ahead and put on that Riptide as quick as possible. It does also do quite a lot of damage, them Karens. Now we're moving on to the armor. We are using the Ouroboros. The reason for the Ouroboros is because we're in um, the snow. And we're going to be going against people that are going to be doing quite a lot of damage to us. Um, so we're going to be using the Alma Gamante uh, perk, which restores 50% of whole health while bracing. The effect only occurs after bracing ends. And then we've got Restoration, restores 100% severe damage every second. So this obviously counteracts if they use any kind of severe damage tactics on us. Um, we're using the Ouroboros, we're getting that back. And plus, we're getting the healing from the brace um, for every time we're taking hits to the actual ship. Now, for the furniture slot, this is a bit of a weird one. A lot of people are probably going to be thinking, what the hell are you doing? Well, I'm using the Rigging Station that recovers. 1% of whole health per second when the whole health is less than 20%. Because this ship has got so much whole health, um, it's got, what, 50,000. Then we we got a dual, uh, dual planked um, hull on it. It actually goes up to 52,500. You are, in effect, getting 20% back of that. Obviously, when you are below 20%, sorry, 1% back of that when you're below 20% um, whole health. But that means that we're getting over 500 health back per second when we're below 20%, which is literally only 40% different to the bark. So the snow, in effect, is getting everything the bark's getting in terms of healing return when you are below 20% health. So whenever you've gone up against a bark and they're below 20% health and they're almost invincible, that basically works the exact same with the snow but not only that because the snow's got so much more whole health and brace strength as well you are getting all that armor back from the Ouroboros so I actually personally think the snow is a better pick than the bark but a lot of people will argue against that um, then for the second furniture slot, we got the Colorvern works increase elemental damage multiplier of the Colorvern by 19% uh, the reason is so we can get that flooding up quicker uh, then we got the long gun works increase elemental damage multiplier of long guns by 19% and um, I don't know if this actually works towards tearing because it is elemental so i've got to do a couple of weapon testing but this is what i'm using just in case it gives me that additional 19 percent towards that um that's what we want and we don't know if piercing as well is 19 percent. so when we hit them parts if it's giving us that bonus not too sure maybe it only works for fire and flood um and repair let's say but who knows i've got it on for there right now you could change that uh, then for the fourth i've got the double planked hole one increases max hole health by five percent so that means it goes from 50 percent to 52.5 uh, thousand, sorry, it goes from 50,000 to 52.5 thousand because you've got that additional 5%. Um, so that is my PvP build. Also, guys, if you didn't know, I go live on twitch.tv forward slash iDeathwishide. It is a free on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the evening in the UK. So come over to the Twitch if you want any help on the game of Skull and Bones. And if you want to just chill and just talk and have someone to talk to, that's absolutely fine as well. Come over to the Twitch. And if you want to be part of the best community on Skull and Bones and obviously in gaming in general on the internet, then go down to the description, discord.gg forward slash death squad. The ears are free. Come on over to the death squad. And if you need any help with anything or you're looking for any items or anything, I'm sure someone is able to help you. Just make sure you reach out into the right channels to get that help. So let's continue. Now, if we were to switch up and we were to go ahead and change my build to the PVE build, I would simply 
just go and change the front to the Great Spring Old Freeze. I would change the left and the right to the Basilisk Freeze. And I would leave the rear as the Long Lines and I would also leave the Orcs as the Leopold. Now, why am I using the Great Spring Old? The reason we're using the Great Spring Old Free, for one, it is better than the Twin Winch Ballista. Twin Winch Ballista, that is over two seconds all of the damage that you're seeing there. It's over two seconds where the Great Spring Old is over one second pullback. So in theory, if you look at the damage there, 2952, and then we look at the Twin Winch, it's 5162. That is over two seconds. So if we times that by two, we're almost at 6,000. So in theory, the Great Spring Old is a lot better and you can fire it a lot quicker. Not only that, the, the, the Twin Winch doesn't have tearing on it, where the Great Spring Old has also got tearing on it, which has increased damage by 50% when hitting the sails, so it can tear people's sails up a lot quicker as well. These are the best weapons for PvE because you can focus them weak points and deal serious amounts of damage. Now on the side, we're using the Basilisk Free. Um, the reason is because it's got the Raider increased charge rate of the vulnerable attack effect by 50%, so it increases crew attacks. Um, or the charge rate of crew attacks, so you could do crew attacks more often in PvE, especially against ships. We want to be able to do crew attacks quite often because that does the most damage, especially against the likes of, for instance, Manghodins or um, Lepest and stuff like that. So the, the, the Raider perk gives us a massive bonus to that. Uh, and then it's got piercing as well, so it adds 20% of damage. As piercing damage, increased damage to weak points by 75% because when you're doing PvE, you're going to be hitting a lot of weak points, um, so you want to be using this. Then for the rear, we got the long nines. The reason we use the long nines is just because of the piercing free, and it's got the tearing as well. And um, the mask break is not really going to get used, but we just want to use the piercing. We want something that's going to hit pretty hard when they're on the rear, which is probably not going to be often, but it's just so whenever they are, we can hit them pretty hard with that. And then we got the Leopold free as well. We like the Leopold just because of the simple explosive and flooding damage. Now, in terms of the armor, the armor, if I was actually doing. PvE, I would still would use the Ouroboros uh, for the likes of the rest Restoration and the Restore. Because in PvE, you still want to be keeping your health up quite high. You don't want to be getting down to them low 20%. So you could, I'd use the Ouroboros. If you did want to mix it up, then use the Black Prince. And if you're going against any kind of Lepest, then make sure you go ahead and chuck the Wailing Ward on. I can't see where it is. There it is. Chuck the Wailing Ward on to the Toxic uh, Resistance. But if you're not, then don't do that. Now, uh, for the Furniture... We want to, on this, put on the water tank. Now, the reason we want the water tank is because it reduces crew stamina depletion by 50% while bracing. Increases stamina recovery by 20%. So, in effect, keeping this on is basically giving us permanent uh, brace, which is something that we really need. I've just noticed as well, this build is not actually showing at level 12. So, if you did want to get it to level 12, then you will need to put on the twin winch. But in this case, I'm using the great spring old. It depends who you're going against. Um... But otherwise, I'd leave it at that. And nothing else is really going to get over 12. So you'd go for the Twin Winch if you want to be over level 12. Um, but yeah, we want to, for this, use the Ouroboros or the Black Prince. And if you're going against any kind of Lepest, then the Wailing Ward. Now, going down to Furniture, like I said, we've got the Water Tank. Um, because of that, it basically gives you unlimited brace because you've, you're, you're not using your crew stamina, which is used when you're bracing. And then you're also getting quite a big recovery um, while bracing, you've got so much brace, it works out so well. We still keep the color burn works because we're using the Basilisk and increase elemental damage multiplier of the color burn. Yet again, it's still yet to be decided whether the Raider or the um, Piercing works as elemental damage. Maybe not, um, but yet again, I'm still using the color works. Color burn work. Uh, culverins. Sorry, I keep calling them color burns. They're culverins um, on the side. And then I've got the long guns on the rear. Now, you could switch out. The uh, long gun for the for the the winch one, which is where are you? You are down here somewhere. No, we don't need to increase the range. We need to increase the elemental damage. This one increase elemental damage multiplier of the uh, the basilisk uh, by ballista. Sorry, by nineteen percent. And then if we go down, we've still got the double planked hull for the extra two point five thousand percent. Extra hull health and obviously more brace strength, which I think is 1,250 because it's half the full hull. So that's my PvE build. Um, and then if I was to go ahead and do a tank build, the tank build that I would do would be front and rear. I would put on the long lines. Uh, so I'll go and put that long line on there. And then for the sides, I would actually put the Zama, Zama Freeze. 
Um, the reason is because we want to be bracing all the time. And because we're going to be bracing all the time, we want to be able to just do a quick pop and then go back to the brace and the zam zammers. Or you could go ahead and put on the flooding demi cannon freeze because you just want to pop it and then go back straight to uh, bracing. You've got the long lines on the rear as well. And then we've got the Leopold as the top. Now you could change it to whatever. You could put it as Le Flu. You could put it on anything you want, really, um, whatever suits you. But I still really like the the leopold just for the massive amounts of damage easy to control now as we use in the tank build we are going to want to use the black prince because it's got the resolute reduces damage taken by 50 percent when a whole health is a whole health is less than 33 percent but not only that this is where we're going to mix it up a little bit we're not going to use the water tank we're going to use the iron cap stat so as a tank we're going to be quite stationary but we've got here not only the uh, additional 50% reduction when we're below 50% with the Black Prince. You can see there, Resolute reduces damage taken by 50% when whole health is less than 33%. So not only are we going to get 50% reduced armor, when we use this, we actually get the Iron Cap stat. As long as we're anchored, we get an additional 15%. So a total of 65% damage reduction. Obviously, you have to be anchored, but you can move and then just double tap B or whatever the prompt is for you to reduce your anchor or to drop your anchor every time you're about to get shot. So you could drop your anchor and brace at the same time. You're getting 65% off plus you are getting, obviously, your, um, your, your brace. Uh, and everything like that. So it is, it is phenomenal to use the Iron Capstad for a break, uh, tank build. And you are generating more threats. So everyone's going to be focusing you. And not going to be focusing your teammates. Meaning if you're doing any kind of PvE activity. Um, you will be taking all the aggro. But because you've got so much health. You can literally tank it like crazy. And get another healer to just sit there healing you. And you can just tank all the main bosses. Uh, the only one that it does obviously not work great against is Lepest. Because that toxic... Uh, does chomp down your brace for the uh, furniture obviously we said we got the iron cap stat now we want to for the second go ahead and put on the stippled gallery which is this one or st sterile galley flipping egg um, I don't know what I'm on about. Increases max stamina by 7%. We go down uh, and then we also want to put on the run pantry. So it increases stamina recovery by 10%. And then we still want to keep on that double planked hull. Uh, the reason we're going for all the extra stamina recovery and more stamina is yet again. So we can brace a lot more. So that's my tank build. What I will do is I will go ahead and chuck on the PvP build quickly. And just show you it in battle. Um, obviously stick around if you want to. But if not then... Um, like, follow, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. So, for the PvP build, as we know, long nines, and then we put the Karens on the sides. So let's go and chuck them Karens on. There's the Karens, and then we keep the long nines on the rear. We keep the Leopold free. The armor that we put on is actually the Ouroboros. We want to go and put the furniture back on, so we don't use the Iron Cap Stab. We actually use the Rigging Station. We don't use that. We use the Culverin Works, which are down here. Bam, 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 bam. There we go. Uh, and then we go to number three, and we want to go and put on the long gun. Now, yeah, again, the long gun is debatable because we don't know how the elemental works. Probably should try it out, especially before season two. So check out a video of that. By the way, guys, if you want to know what cosmetics I'm using as well, I'm using the Road Mangodin Flames of Retribution um, color, as well as the pattern I'm using, the gold box uh, pattern, which is this one, the Gilded Embellishment. And the emblem I'm using, as always, is the Forgotten Doll. Uh, if you want to know how to get any of it, then go over to Skull and Bones Tools. The links are in the description as well. I'm using the Angel as my figurehead. I'm using the Road Mangode in the Vengeful Dead um, hull, because I like the all black. Then I've got all of the Ashen Corsairs throughout, throughout the whole ship now. Um, so, in order to get this activated, the PvP, we can obviously turn it on. Now we can look at the map and we can see that there is no PvP in this map. So how do you get a server with it? Well, make sure before you do what I'm about to do, make sure your PvP flag is on. When it's on, all you want to do is simply quit to main menu and then rejoin. And with doing that, with just quitting to the menu and rejoining, it will immediately put you into a server where everyone else has got their PvP flagged on. It tries putting you with either pve players or pvp players so depending on how you start or load up the game if you've got the pvp flag on it will put you into a pvp server if you've got the pvp flag off it will put you into a, a predominantly pve server so if you want to go into a server where you just want to test out builds with your friend then it's best to probably load up the game in pve and then put your pvp flag on 
Uh, that way you'll be able to do stuff without having any issues really from anyone else in the game. Um, so now, as you can see in the bottom right, we are loading in. And when we do load in, we should see that it's mainly PvP and we can go ahead and try and kill some people. My right bumper is not the greatest on my controller. Um, so because of that, unfortunately, my bracing is not the greatest. And for this, you do need bracing. We've got someone just there. Let me make sure I've got some food on me. I have got some food. Reduces bra Yeah, that would do. I'm not too bothered, really. I've got some uh, repair kits. Let's set sail and let's go and test out this build in PvP. Um, I'm not the greatest of PvPers. But it's a really good build in terms of stats and all that. Um, so let's go over. I don't know if my saturation's turned up a little bit too much. Guys, let me know in the comments down below if the saturation's a little bit too high. I just looked to the, the screen and it did look quite high. Oh, we got the big one banana who's coming out to actually fight. Um, this would be cool. We get to test it here. Wait. Big banana's only level 8. I don't really want to be killing big banana. So let's go over to... Beninjo, I'm not gonna. I'm banana. I'm not gonna fight you because I think it's a little bit unfair if I do fight you, being a level eight and I'm a level twelve ship. I'll put a firework up just to uh, let them know. Invites me to a group. Go on then. Why not? Oh no, Beninjo's only level nine as well. I don't want to be killing Beninjo. Wait, why is everyone only level nines and that in here? No, no, no! I'm not gonna go fight. I'm not gonna go fight someone who's lower level than me. That's. I think that's just unfair. So I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna try and go for someone who's level 12. So let's go over to here and hopefully we can get a decent fight over here. Let me leave this group then. Let's leave group. Yes. And there's only seven people in the world, but everyone's basically doing PvP. Hopefully the people over there are actually. Let's have a look. Social. The world. Yeah, they're definitely, obviously, they should have level 12 ships. Hopefully, yet again. Um, otherwise, I'll try and server hop and get into another server where it's a little bit better and a little bit fairer um, for when we do go and potentially fight them. Let's disembark. Let's quickly fast travel. You should be able to fast travel when you're close to the disembark rather than having to do a load screen then to fast travel. But who knows? Maybe it's quite difficult in the coding um, to do an area where you can actually do that. Here we go. We're loading out here now. Or oh, we're loading here. And then we need to go out. So let's quickly just exit. Let's set sail. Anyone. Anyone want to fight? Right. These are all level 12. So just need one of these to fight me. And then I'm good. Who wants to fight? Looks like they're fighting each other. So maybe I can fight... So I can fight the BJ83. Let's try and get this bumper held. Oh, I missed that. There were some clean shots. Now he's going to be playing the long nines. So he's basically just going to try and pepper my sails down. That is literally going to be his whole tactic here for the whole time. Which is rather annoying. Because it's literally going to be a game of uh, who can hit the sails a bit better. Which neither of us are too great at, I suppose. We've hit his sails and we can quickly drop a bit of flooding on him. This way we can get him out of the water a little bit quicker. Didn't really do any flooding damage. So our goal here, guys, is to try and get that flooding down. Oh, naughty. Remember, we've got all this brace, and we do actually heal up our brace as long as we hold in the brace. Uh, we just need to make sure our food is always up, and then, in fact, this person can't really ever kill us. As long as we've got our food up, we can just constantly heal. I just need to try and get that flood enough. As long as I can get that flood enough, we are good. Am I getting hit by multiples? I don't even know. Let's 
try and get that flood knock. I might have to put my headphones on. little crew attack. Twenty seconds. Let's quickly just uh, make sure we eat that. Oh. Yes, we got the flooding off. I need to just quickly hold that. And now, this is where I need to try and get as much damage as I can with these to actually start getting that severe while the flooding's still up. Because this is where I start to win the fight. See, now he's now taking all that severe damage. So I need to try and get as much of that off as possible. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why can't I brace? I've got a brace now for a long period of time. Try and get them shots off. Get them long lines off. Try and get a little bit more of that going. Try and get this flooding back up. I am playing the flooding game here, guys. Flooding up to half. Okay, nice. I need to try and get them sails torn. back up to make sure we've got enough to keep this going. Can't really detect a halt sail anyway. Try and pop these sails. Right, lovely. Get that food up. He's crashed. While well, he's crashed, let's make the most of it. Get that flooding on. There we go. Now this is where we go to work. No. Wait, oh, he repair kitted. Damn. He knows how much damage it done to him before. So he made sure he repair kitted that. Can't see my sail damage on him though. Oh, we've done that though. We've torn his sail so we could actually hit him with one of these. Try and get a nice bit of juicy damage on him.
Oh, we got that flooding up high. I don't know if he's managed to repair it. He hasn't. There we go. We're getting a lot of that flooding off on him. Pop a bigger one. Good barrage of shots then. That was terrible. Who else is hitting me with a more? There's no way he's got two. He can't fire two mortars at once. sales again. Okay, I think we might have hit him with that flood then. No. So we actually start aiming for the hole because he's quite weak. See uh tearing of the sails now. Can we get the flood enough? Nah, it didn't hit. Why are you running? No, I'm not having that. You're coming back here. No way. He's flipping left. Well, there you go, guys. 
that basically explains the build. Um, it, like I said, it doesn't do massive amounts of damage, but what it does do is last a serious long time. And uh, because it lasts so long, um, you can literally just stay in the fight and eventually they'll have to leave before you because you are causing that flooding damage, meaning that flooding damage is constantly going to pick away at their actual full overall whole health. Um, so they will eventually have to leave the fight before you because you're not getting done by that and you've got the Ouroboros, so you're surviving or reducing any severe damage that gets put on you as well. So, I mean, hopefully you enjoyed that. Like, follow, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Wow. Isn't that a good firework?